Welcome to Tech Skills, Intro to Tech Skills, Tell Me More. My name is Gwen. Before we get started, I'd like to remind you of our code of conduct. Be sure to check it out. We'll have a link in the chat for everyone before we dive in, right? Hello, Bill. Salman, how are you doing? I'm doing amazing. I'm super excited for the next two days you're here with us. And hey, we're in person, but we'd love to know where you're all joining from and put that in the chat. Yeah, be sure to fill the chat with all the locations that you're checking in from. Did you know, Salman, we're actually live from the Redmond Microsoft Reactor? Yeah, but um, I'd, I'd like to know a bit more about the reactor. Could you just give me a bit more info, Gwen? Of course. The Microsoft Reactor is a program with 12 locations all over the world, and the goal is to host community-led events for the community, all free, no matter your experience, no matter your role, you are welcome at the Reactor. So thank you so much to the Reactor team for letting us bring, you know, Intro to Tech Skills live at Microsoft Build right from the Redmond location. Yes, and hey, we have sessions for everyone, whether you feel like you're, you want to career switch, maybe you're a student, everyone's welcome. And we're going to be showcasing lots of different things which will help you get started, but also to the career section as well. So we'll, we'll go into that now, right? Exactly. Also, our social handles are on screen. If you have any questions or anything you want to reach out to us about Intro to Tech Skills, let us know. We are here for you. We keep saying, what is Intro to Tech Skills? But you know, I feel like we should actually define what it actually is. So what is Intro to Tech Skills at Microsoft Builds on? Yes, so that's a great question, Glenn. Perhaps you found Intro to Tech Skills in the session builder, or maybe you got an email about it. Intro to Tech Skills is really for anyone who wants to come into tech, whether you're a career switcher, maybe mm -hmm. you're a student, maybe you don't fit into any of those personas, mm -hmm. but you just want to explore tech. Anyone is welcome, right? Perhaps you, you want to think of your first day of school, right? Your first day of school, you have loads of subjects. That's really what we're giving you an open world view into. Every single thing in tech in the way you can get exposure to and how to take that even further. Exactly. Uh, Intro to Tech Skills is a selection of curated sessions for anyone looking to get into tech, students, career changers. You're going to find something that is going to help you out here. And we're going to be your co-hosts for every single session here at Intro to Tech Skills. So get familiar with us, right? Now, we're going to be packed. Every single Intro to Tech Skills session will be packed with resources alongside every session at Build, actually. So here's our first one. Salman, why do we have a map on the screen right now? Great question again, Gwen. I really like these questions. <laughs> and hey, if you have any questions in the chat, feel free to ask them, because there's no such thing as a stupid question. Maybe you're helping someone out, right? So hey, so with, with, the, first, with the first session, we have this map, right, where we're showing you it. This, this map will come across all of these sessions, but we have this map because our theme, as you can see from behind us, is, is around the world. Exactly. So this year, hey, we're all celebrating diversity where everyone's from. We're trying to get everyone involved. And you can see over there on the left, right, we have so, some different topics. What are those going? Exactly. We have, what are your interests? Are you interested in tech in general, cloud, artificial intelligence, low code or no code? Maybe you're interested in all of these. Maybe you don't really know what you're interested in in the first place completely fine because you see all of these go into that day one, which is, you see that little green circle on there. It says, this is where you're at right now. We're nicknaming this day Runway to Getting Started. And our goal for this day is to have sessions that give you sort of a high level introduction to different areas in tech. So you can sort of get a feel for what you want to specialize into. And you see these arrows now point into day two. What can people expect from day two? Some. Yeah, so the first day you've got your foundations built. Maybe you want to take it to the next level. You want to dive into some more specialized topics such as artificial intelligence. You want to look into, hey, getting your resume prepared for a job. Or maybe before that, you want to see how you can prepare for a technical interview. We have loads of people here at Microsoft who are going to be presenting their experience and showcasing their best tips for you. Exactly. And we know that your journey into tech or your journey in tech doesn't end here at Intro to Tech Skills at Microsoft Build. So we see we have that far right, continue your journey, and we have a link there with a bunch of resources that you know a little bit more about as well, right? Yeah, so because we're showcasing a video to you, you know, mm -hmm. where we're here presenting to you, maybe you want to take it to the journey of trying to get hands in, you know, hands mm -hmm. stuff so. in. It's really good if you have that experience because you may find things which we haven't spoken about because perhaps we're used to things and we can try our best to communicate as, as much as we can exactly. every little detail but really getting hands in stuck in you find the fun of it you you perhaps de deviate off into your own journey and that's what all of this is about perhaps also you're not able to join every single session so these are resources as well 
that so if you don't want to watch video content you can go through microsoft learn which is a free resource by the way and you can go through learning paths and more on learning paths because this is how we sort of got into this stuff in the first place yeah. through learning paths we're going to talk a little bit more about learning paths and a bunch more resources in a bit but at the bottom left you see we have stamp your pass support which includes three activities and when we think about journeys we think about all around the world we think about maps you think about passports and you kind of stamp your way across each destination well, we have three here, create a GitHub account, create a Microsoft Azure account, and do some learn modules so you can get hands on. And we also have pack your suitcase with additional skills outside of our core sessions. So we have three boxes there, Salman. What can people expect from those? Yes, so with all of these different things, right, you have the ability to learn about Cloud Skills Challenge, you've got Minecraft Time Machine and AI Gaming. We'll go into those later, but under the Stamp Your Passport section, you have the the ability to create a GitHub account, you can re redeem Azure credits, and you can also go on Microsoft Learn. With GitHub, it's, it's a really cool website. We'll go into more detail later, but what you should also do is redeem your free Azure credits, because it's free money, right? <laughs> who, who doesn't want some free money? And, and Microsoft Learn is also free if, if you do feel perhaps you don't know which learning path or which module, because we keep saying learning paths and all this technical jargon. <laughs> you feel like you don't know where to start. There's a really awesome thing where you put in your personality, or like what you're interested in, and you get all these curated learning paths just for you. Exactly. So our goal with this map is to show you that at Intro to Tech Skills, you're going to get the sessions, you're going to get the knowledge, and then outside of it, there's so much more where you can get hands-on and practical. Now let's dive into what we can expect from day one and day two just a little deeper. May 24th is Runway to Getting Started, and if you're interested in perhaps learning a little bit more about what tools you can expect a developer's toolkit to uh, have, there's going to be a session on that. Maybe you're interested in learning a little bit more about programming languages. There's a session called uh, Hello World in three different programming languages. Did you know that, Sam? Well, I, I do actually already know different languages, right? So, Bonjour, I've got uh, Hello Mondo, uh, Hello Varda. You're very, you're very talented. I hope you know that. But we're talking more about things like Python or, or Java. Are you familiar with oh, yeah. those? It's okay, wait. You're saying it's not languages, but now you're telling me about snakes and coffee snakes and coffee exactly <laughs> so maybe you should join that hello world session and i think you're going to gain a lot of clarity from that what do you think that's a good idea and uh, again perhaps you thought the same thing and that's completely fine exactly. because no question is a stupid question and we're here for you throughout these sessions if you feel stuck at any point just tweet us put something in the chat and we'll be trying to answer your questions throughout all of these sessions. Throughout exactly. The days. Let us know. Now, May 25th, launching into the industry. Salman, what can we expect from that day? Exactly. So we mentioned that you're going to be able to learn from recruiters about, hey, your, your resume or perhaps how, how do you take it to the next level with technical interviews. That session is your launch into the industry. So you've got your foundation built. You've got all these sessions where you can dive deep into the industry. and. You know that recruiter we have? So we have this one recruiter who's, be, who's going to be delivering a session. Doesn't she have like quite a lot of experience on this stuff? I've heard seven years of experience as a recruiter at Microsoft, which I wish I had a session like this when I was getting started because I know my resume needed a lot of work. So hopefully I can catch that. And hopefully that'll be super useful for a lot of you all in the audience as well. But wait, there is even more fun learning opportunities. This section was at that bottom right part of the map. We want to dive a little deeper into this because we think there's actually a bunch of fun activities outside of the sessions that you can do. Let's start off with AI gaming. Salman? Yes, so AI, meaning artificial intelligence, is a really awesome thing which has you know, been around for a long time, but it sort of, to some people, will sound like a buzzword. So, hey, it's not actually that complex. What people are going to be able to do is if you've heard of the match game, have you heard of the match game before, Gwen? Of course, it's classic. Yeah, so what you have is you need to match cards in your deck. They're all like turned over. You see, okay, if you turn one over, it needs to match another. And if you're able to do it in like a, a really efficient way, you get loads of points. And what you do is you play against another person. Mm -hmm. What you're going to be able to do is instead of you having to look at the cards and remember using your memory, you code a bot. And it's really, you know, suitable for beginners. The, the computer is going to be able to recognize these images. And the twist is that those images aren't actually the exact same. It's able to recognize <laughs> different images, but know that they're the same object, which is really awesome. Sounds like a great way to get hands on with AI. I personally have no idea what AI is. So this is something I'm definitely going to check out. I know it is geared towards beginners, so you don't have to be a complete expert in artificial intelligence. So 
join me while I also figure out what this even is about. Anyway, Klaus Goes Challenge. Everyone, listen up. I am a big fan of Klaus Goes Challenges. I'm a big fan of certifications. We'll talk a little bit more about our journeys and, and, and our uh, experiences with certifications uh, later on. But Klaus Goes Challenge is a set of eight different learning uh, paths that we have with Microsoft Learn. And you're going to get a feel for what you want to sort of specialize in as you go through these sessions at Intro to Tech Skills. And there's going to be a Klaus Goes Challenge that will align with what you're interested in. You complete all the learning material, which is completely free. You're going to get hands-on. Some of them have sandboxes for you to actually do you know, some dev things. And once you complete them, you will be eligible for a Microsoft certification voucher that's going to be sent out June 30th. So keep that in mind. Not only are you going to learn, you're also going to be able to get that exam and be able to you know, showcase your industry experience on your resume, on your LinkedIn, on your email signature, wherever it is that you want to share your certifications. For students, we have a very special offer for you. Did you know this, Salman, that for students, every single fu uh, fundamental certification is free? Did you know that? Now, to me, that is such incredible news because I, I, I love certifications. Right? Mm -hmm. We'll talk about this more later. But as a student, you know, I do, do I have to fork out a bunch of money just to be certified? And do I, Gwen? No, you don't. For the fundamental certifications, the Microsoft ones are completely free for any student. You can check that out, aka.ms slash student certification. And I think on top of you know getting your education at school, doing your projects, all these kinds of things, adding certifications on top of that is just going to help you you know launch your career into tech as well. Uh, we also have Minecraft Time Machine. I don't know anything about Minecraft, but you told me a, a, a fun fact about Minecraft that I was floored when you told me about this. Yes, yeah, so, um, <laughs> yesterday we were, we were at the Microsoft store there, but there was loads of Minecraft around mm -hmm. the place. It was so awesome because I, I started Minecraft like 10 years ago. And the, 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 okay, so I'm going to ask you again. Yeah. And I want people in the chat to also guess. So what, what do you think the average age of a Minecraft player is, Gwen? I think I originally guessed like 12. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so. You, you would think that, right? And you have loads of kids playing Minecraft. Mm -hmm. The actual age, okay, get ready, is the average age of the Minecraft player is going to be 24. Okay. So Mind blown. That is, like, if you feel that, okay, well, you know, I'm, I'm 30, I don't want to play Minecraft, well, what's going on? It's, like, it's completely fine. Okay. And it, it, okay, going back to what the time machine is, speaking of time, wherever you are now, okay, maybe you're at university, you work at a company. Maybe you're just at home, but the challenge is, can you build that same location 100 years from now? We want to see your creativity, your imagination. We want to see what you come up with and share those with us on social media. And then we'll be, we'll be going through those later. And it's really exciting. I'm really excited to see what people come up with because you never know what's going to happen in 100 years. Exactly. It's a great way to not only flex your technical ability, but also your creative skill sets, which a lot of areas in tech, if not most, if not all, are very creative, actually. So do we expect everyone to memorize absolutely everything that we've been telling? We've been dropping links. We've been dropping uh, programs. We've been dropping resources. Do we expect everyone to just... Are we gonna, we're going to quiz them, right? Yeah, exactly. So everyone... Um... In, in the next session, we're gonna have, gonna have a quiz. Uh, no, but wait, no, to be serious, uh, and everything, everything's just gonna be provided mm -hmm. in a one easy place to remember, and that's on GitHub. But okay, what's GitHub? Is it a bug? Um, can, can you tell yeah. us a bit more? I was, uh, we were talking a little bit about this earlier, but I think GitHub is probably the best thing ever since sliced bread, right, Salman? Would you agree with yeah. that? <laughs> But in all, in all seriousness, GitHub is a page that is foundational for anyone in tech who's looking to showcase their code projects, their resources, or if they're looking to collaborate on other projects, resources, and other people, you're going to need a GitHub account for that. And we mentioned that because we're actually going to utilize GitHub as well. But before we talk about our GitHub repo, we have that first link uh, that says, add these sessions to your backpack. Salman? Yes. So you already have probably visited this page in the past, but this is a link to all of the Intro to Tech Skill sessions that we've been talking about. Maybe you want to learn about how to get started, the programming languages. What even what even is a programming language? Is it is it copy? Is it Java? Is they all? <laughs> I mean, is is it a country and stuff like this? Well, all of this stuff is going to be available for you if you go to this link, and you'll see all these sessions from Intro to Tech Skills, and you can add those to your backpack, favorite them, and you can watch them on demand later. And also, there's resources there too. 
Exactly. Now, that second link there is explore the sessions on GitHub uh, session resources, everything that we've been mentioning, the challenges, the the certification offer for students, the cloud skills challenges, all those things will be at that that second link, which is that aka.ms intro to tech skills at build. So if there's any link that you bookmark this entire time at build, make sure you bookmark that one because absolutely everything will be there. Also, it's time to mention our hashtags. We keep saying like share, but we have hashtag MS build and hashtag intro to tech skills. And why do we keep mentioning these hashtags and social media and sharing and getting people to engage with us? Why, why do we talk about this all? Yeah, so to me, this is one of the best things about all of these events is that you get to have that interaction with the community. And we really want to shout out all of you. Exactly. And whatever you have to share, whether that be Minecraft and you want to build something, maybe you just want to share what your journey is, where mm -hmm. you're from. Anything you want, just showcase, you know, showcase that on social media, use the hashtags msbuild, intro to tech skills, and we'll, we'll be going through those and hopefully showcasing some of you or shouting some of you out later. Exactly. If there's something along any session at intro to tech skills that you find interesting, maybe there's a quote, maybe there's a service, maybe there's some fun fact, anything, Make sure you use those hashtags so we can find you because build is so much better sharing it with all of y'all. I know we have some prizes as well, right, Salman? Yeah, so, you know, there's prizes on the screen and uh, I thought that, you know, the viewers, you want to hear about that, right? We, we don't want to just skip onto the next slide, do we? So, <laughs> um, this is the huge announcement, right? So what you, we can get throughout these sessions, throughout with Microsoft Build, you have the opportunity to, to get LinkedIn prizes, Xbox awesome. Game Pass prizes. More awesome. And this thing to me is so awesome, Azure Heroes badges. Yeah, I'm a big fan of them too. I think they're a fun way of showcasing your skill sets, put them on your email signature. I just like collecting things in general. And you can put it on your LinkedIn with the LinkedIn prizes too, right? <laughs> so this is all full circle. And hey, Game Pass, if no one knows what that is, you should check it out. You can game from anywhere, right? I could just game here right now. Right now, let's do it. Forza or Flight Simulator. Um, but yeah, it's so cool. Right? Exactly. So if you want more info about how you can win those prizes, you can find it on the GitHub link. Which you already bookmarked, right? Because I told everyone to, right? All right, so there's prizes. But enough about talking about everyone else. It's time to talk about us. Um, and wh why are we here? What are we even doing? How did we get here? How did we get into tech? Let's, 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 give, let's tell people a little bit about ourselves. I'll let, will you do the honors and introduce sure. yourself? Thank, thank you, Glenn. So myself, Okay, let's start from the beginning as how I actually started with Azure. We, we keep saying sign up to Azure, right? Why, mm -hmm. why do we want to do this? And why do you want to sign up to Microsoft Learn? So those two really have a lot of connections because for me, I started out with Azure, the Microsoft Cloud Platform, right? Because of Microsoft Learn. Microsoft Learn had this learning path which showed me a no-code entry point into the cloud and no code, right? So we were talking about programming languages. Think of it as if you have Lego blocks, right? And you want to stack a Lego block and it connects to another Lego block, right? You go through a learning path, it guides you on this journey, it gives you some activities and it tells you to set this up and it gives you everything you need. There will be video tutorials, there'll be text which you can read through and you can use amazing things in Microsoft Edge like Immersive Reader to make it more accessible to you. Okay, so that's how I sort of got started. Right. I was through Logic Apps, and it's such an amazing tool. I've actually had that same app running for now three years. And what <laughs> it does, well, I'm saying app, I'm saying these words, what does it actually do? Like, there's, there's no point in me just saying these words without telling me what it does. We're telling you what it does, sorry. <laughs> so what it does is it goes up outside on Twitter, and it checks for any tweet which has my username. Mm -hmm. So if you want to try it, you can. And it will check if it's a positive tweet or a negative tweet. So if suddenly one day I do something so outrageous, I'm going to be notified <laughs> <Please don't. laughs> by, by my email, like 1,500 emails or something. Um, but yeah, that's how I got started into Azure. I then moved on to work at Microsoft in cloud stuff yeah. with a lot of business customers. And then here we are today. So that's uh, pretty much how I got started with Microsoft Learn, which is free. Yeah, we sort of, sort of share a similar intro into Azure and Microsoft Technologies, you with Logic Apps, I used something called Azure Functions, which is a serverless service. Salman, do you know what serverless is? Oh, sorry. Of? Could, could, could you help me out a bit, please? Of course. Uh, so serverless means it's a, a place where, where your code, your projects, 
whatever it is that you're deploying, you have it deployed on infrastructure and that infrastructure, the servers, whatever it is, you don't have to maintain. So yes, computers are still running your code. Yes, someone is maintaining them, but it's not you. So essentially it's serverless for you. But I'm a big fan of Azure Functions and serverless technologies. And I learned a lot about them using Microsoft Docs, using Microsoft Learn. And then I actually got a promotion to a cloud role because of all the projects that I had been doing. And I showed, showcased to my boss like, hey, I'm up for the challenge. I really wanna get into a cloud role. And that's how I ended up getting more into cloud engineering. Later on, I started a YouTube channel because I wanted to also share what I've, I've learned with other people in the community. The community gave to me and I gave back. And then I ended up here at Microsoft as a cloud advocate uh, for about a year now. And this is why we're sort of sitting right next to each other as well. But I know not only do we share a love for serverless, a love for Azure, uh, but we also have been impacted with programs like the MVP program, the Microsoft Student Ambassador Program. I know there's Microsoft Leap as well. There's Microsoft Learn. Do you want to talk a little bit more about your experiences with those programs? Yeah, like Gwen mentioned, there's so many, right? There's the Insider Program. You've got the Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador Program. These programs are so amazing because you get to interact with the community mm -hmm. and share your passion. And for me, I have sort of felt that that's a safe space for me to be at the fanboy that I've always wanted to be. <laughs> like just worrying about being like too much of a fanboy. But instead of me talking about it, I know that we have such amazing members in the community. Are we able to get someone on to speak with us? Of course, we can get anyone on from anywhere in the world with the power of Microsoft Teams. I would like to introduce Constantinos, who is a Microsoft MVP Office Apps and services category, also a modern workplace consultant and architect all the way from Greece. Um, we'd like to introduce Constantinos. Constantinos, hi, how are you doing? Hey. Hello all from Athens, Greece. Hello, Build. A big thank to Gwen and uh, Salman who invited me to join this amazing session. It is a great honor for me to participate Microsoft Build and uh, let me share with you that it was my dream that became true today. Awesome. So thank you so much for that intro, Constantinos. What, what I'd really like to ask is, hey, because you know, I know you and I've interacted with you over a number of years, but could you tell us a bit more about yourself? Yes, of course. Uh, my first professional exposure with Microsoft Technologies was in 2003, um, uh, starting with uh, databases in a uh, basic level. Then in 2006, I started working as Microsoft and uh, Microsoft uh, SharePoint and Microsoft 365 uh, solution architect. And then in 2014, uh, participating Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador Program. I worked in uh, development, uh, primarily with .NET and C Sharp, uh, combined with SQL databases. And for the last six years, I have been working as uh, a modern workplace solution architect uh, um, uh, on project uh, on projects based uh, exclusively in SharePoint, in Power Platform, and in Microsoft 365. Um, uh, that I have been awarded with uh, a most Microsoft Most Valuable Professional Award in Office App and Services category in 2021. That is awesome, Constantinos. You have quite the experience, and I know you do a lot of community work as well, so I really want to thank you uh, on behalf of all of us for all the contributions that you do. And I know you have great advice for people who are maybe in trying to get into uh, tech, uh, maybe their students or wherever it is that they're they're getting started with their journey. Uh, do you have any advice for people who are looking to get into the tech space? Yes. First, I think they should identify the technology area that they are interested in. Then they have to combine knowledge gained from Microsoft Learn uh, with the use of tools for their respective technologies. For example, if they are interested to work on cloud technologies, they should work on Microsoft Azure. If you ask my opinion, I think that the future is in the cloud computing and the and in AI. So if uh, they are interested in developer technologies, they should um, ob obviously start uh, with the basics, Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code, and at the same time to consult GitHub 
uh, where they can find sample codes and they should slowly start creating their own projects um, uh, to store them in uh, their repositories to reuse it in the future and or to uh, improve them in the future. If they are uh, interested in um, a data platform, I think they should work on uh, uh, Azure databases, relational and non-relational databases. I think, uh, um, uh, for example, they can uh, just create a simple SQL Azure database. And of course, I suggest them to use the Azure Data Studio to query their databases and to, the, to manipulate the, their data. And finally, if they are interested to work in modern workplace, of course, they have to work on uh, Microsoft 365, SharePoint, Dynamics 365, Power Platform to create uh, uh, innovative solution for the new digital transformation era. Next step, I think um, it is good to, um, to take the official exam uh, of Microsoft certification um, to get certified to be able to prove their um, uh, skills in the IT market. And of course, they can uh, attend for free all the Microsoft Tech Days. It is very important to get information from the experts. Wow, thank you so much, Konstantinos. You've provided so many amazing resources yeah, for awesome. the audience to check out. Hey, I've got a question. So, you know, perhaps I get stuck doing learning path sometimes. Do you sometimes get stuck as well, Gwen? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so my question for you, Constantinos, is say, for example, I do get stuck in a learning path. I perhaps can't set up a resource in Azure. Mm -hmm. What do I do? Do I have anyone I can go to? I think if you have any question about any technology, I think that it is a good idea to visit um, the official blog that Microsoft Most Valuable Professional uh, maintain and uh, writing articles. Also, you can attend various events of my, organized by Microsoft or organized by Microsoft Most Valuable Professional. I always answer um, when someone send me uh, an issue that it is related to my technology. I'm trying to help and I believe that at the end we will become better if we help each other. Absolutely, we agree with that. Constantinos, have, thank you. I have one more idea. Uh, also, you can uh, you can use all these uh, Microsoft Tech Days uh, to ask your question in the Q and A section. It is something more that you can use. Awesome, thank you so much. Again, Constantinos, we want to thank you for all the contributions, all the material that you put out there, and all the time you spend answering questions. And I'm just curious. Do you have any, any final words that you want to give to the audience, to the people looking get, to get into the space, everyone who is with us right here at Enter the Tech Skills at Microsoft Build? Yes, I would advise you to work as a team, uh, to trust your partner, uh, to be professional, to be strict with yourself. Don't lose your faith in yourself. Um, please uh, keep dreaming because sometimes you are so close to your dreams, but you don't know. Look at me. Uh, today, my one of my dreams became true. Uh, I, I think that it is absolutely necessary to help each other. And of course, we need to share our knowledge. It is very important. And uh, uh, my last advice, I read it in a book, and it is my motto for many years. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go with your team. Just before. Just before you go, Constantinos, could you just elaborate a bit more on what are tech days for our audience? I didn't hear the question. Sorry. Um, if it's OK, are you able to just elaborate a bit more on what tech days are? You have, I mean that you have to join the tech days. Uh, you can use tech days to, uh, to, to become, uh, to, to take uh, knowledge. And also, you can attend uh, all these different technologies that Microsoft for free uh, um, uh, is organized by Microsoft for free for everyone. And also, after the tech days, you can take uh, an exam. In, in many of the uh, tech days, you, uh, Microsoft give you an exam voucher, and you can take the official 
um, uh, the official exams to get certified and to use to be able to use it to prove your uh, uh, skills in the IT market. Awesome. Thank you so much, Constantinos. Thank you for being with us. Couldn't have asked for a better guest. Thank you for your, all your contributions to the community as well. Salman, I know it's been a, a fantastic time talking with Constantino, so we wish you the absolute best. Uh, we are actually back here at our map, our trusty map, right? Uh, we've covered a lot of the sections here. We talked about the general interests. We talked about what we can expect from day one, day two, continuing your journey. We talked about stamping your passport. We've also talked about all the things that you can pack your suitcase with additionally, right? But again, this map is also on the GitHub. We're going to be showing this at the introduction of every session. So you're going to get very, very familiar with this one. Uh, and do you have anything else to add about this map before I move on? Yes, so with this map, don't forget that if it looks overwhelming, that's completely normal. Actually, something that we spoke about like two days ago is imposter syndrome. Oh, yeah. And I feel like all the time, uh, imposter. Here, I'm an imposter going to university. I'm, I'm an imposter. Do I belong here? I transferred to unis. You know, my first ever job mm -hmm. I was like, do I deserve this job? And it's like all these things. Like, do I even belong at tech? Should I be doing psychology or some other degree? Right. That's completely normal. And everyone feels it. Whether someone be intro early in career, whether the career switching, maybe they're already senior level or they've been in the industry for like 20 years already. It's completely normal. And the resource we have in our GitHub repository and also our session page is building tech resilience. And that's about, you know, tackling different things such as imposter syndrome and being comfortable with being uncomfortable. And that's, I think, a really important thing is that through life, we, we have loads of obstacles. Exactly. And sometimes one decision, which takes a minute, maybe one resume application, which we're going to help you <laughs> get to the best of what you can do with resumes for that session later on, mm -hmm. that could change your life, right, Gwen? Exactly. And uh, all these resources, like we mentioned, we're going to have up once more on the screen. I actually checked out that tech resilience thing that you mentioned, because when they asked me to say, like, hey, Gwen, do you want to host some stuff I build? I was like, me? Why me? And to keep in mind, this is a feeling that we feel at different stages at our career, and you're not alone. Ask us questions, use the hashtags, you know, build that community, reach out to your community, lean into your community. We're here to help as well. So just keep in mind those resources that we have on screen for you. And again, that GitHub is going to have absolutely everything that you need. Now, I know we have a couple of questions, but before we dive into questions, someone, have you heard of the Imagine Cup? Well, yeah, to so the Imagine Cup, right? But, but I think, didn't you play a big role in the Imagine Cup this year? So I think you should sort of do the explaining because. I, I think I played a, a small role. So the Imagine Cup is a competition that we host at Microsoft every year. It was actually the 20th anniversary this year. Did you know that? No, I did not. <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. Congratulations to the team that is behind the Imagine Cup. Uh, and it's a bunch of different teams from all over the world come together and create solutions that they believe, and we also believe, are going to change the world. We have the finals today, if everyone watched it right after Satya's uh, keynote. And congratulations to all the team with the 20th anniversary happening. They also did give like $20,000 to eat to eat the second place and third place as well, on top of the grand prize for the winning team. The winning team, V Bionic, congratulations team. I had the privilege of being a very small, small part of your journey. Just downplaying her role. Very small did, part did of that. Uh, but congratulations team and to all the other, all the teams as well. We're super proud. And I, I personally feel really happy that the next generation is empowered, but also motivated and passionate to create these things out there. So shout out to y'all team, shout out to everyone. Uh, Magic Cup was awesome. Q&A, should we answer some questions, Tom? Yeah, sure. Let's go ahead. We, As we said, we're trying to answer any questions you have. So why don't we start off with the first one? And, you know, we, we talk about Azure, right? Mm -hmm. So there's Azure, which loads of business customers use. And it's actually a real thing that companies are using right, all across the world, OK? But what is Azure for students? Do you want to tell us a bit more about that, Gwen? Exactly. Azure for students will give you a special amount of credits on your account 
that are specific for students to encourage you to get hands-on to maybe build your projects that you're working on at school or if there's things that you're learning at school and you want to implement them in the cloud you can create your azure for students account uh, and then you'll have like more accounts than you know, your typical non-student account would anything else you could add there yeah so i mean it's completely free what you have is who doesn't want free money like i said before it's just like it makes no sense to not get it okay so if you've ever wanted to do these things like automate twitter and detect sentiment or automate your emails things like this it's gonna it won't cost you a single cent and to me that, that like i said i've been running that same thing for three years i haven't done i haven't paid a single cent for that right and it's just it's incredible because all you have to do is sign up with the aka.ms slash azure for students thing and you'll be able to get your free credit and that's so awesome because i started using azure in university right because of this stuff right right and these people at the imagine cup they're using azure so if you want to get prepared for the imagine cup for next year because this one's in the year also there's an imagine cup junior competition for those who are younger but if you want to get into it you want to learn about these things and you want to win these amazing prizes and get mentorship with satya it's a real great way to get your foot in the door by yep, starting. Absolutely, get hands-on students. And for those who are not students, don't worry, we also think of you. Azure.com slash free. You can also get started with a free Azure account. I know we had a couple of other questions that we, um, I think someone was asking a little bit more about internship opportunities. Salman, I know you have quite the experience there with internships. What, what, what tips, what advice, or what insight can you provide for you know, students who want to get internships at Microsoft? Yeah, so I, I interned a number of roles for, for context here. So I, I did cloud solution architecture, which came off this Azure thing, right? <laughs> and then I went into program or product management, right? So for me, this journey, what I sort of thought was, okay, so what do I need to do that employees are already sort of doing or interns are already, already doing? You just sort of look around it, you observe, and you're like, okay, so they're doing Azure, they have a GitHub account. Mm -hmm. They're active on GitHub, they're active on, active on stuff like LinkedIn, and they're building up a personal brand. So to me, I think that's a really great way to get yourself, not to just be a walking degree certificate, but to be more than a certificate. And you can showcase all these things through all these platforms. And again, these things, they, you should have to pay a single cent. So it's, it's really cool. And yeah, it's, it's just, apply on microsoft.com slash university and we, we will have again like we said university we have a university recruiter who will be giving the advice for you and specifically there will be parts tailored just for students in that session but also it's open to people who aren't students as well so you could be not in tech and wanting to go into another non-tech role or go to a tech role that, that session is going to be one i recommend for you Exactly. And I think you gave great advice, not only for people trying to, inter to intern at Microsoft, but also internships in general. Put yourself out there, lean into the connections and networking opportunities that you have at school, lean into colleagues, perhaps there's professors that have opportunities, maybe there are local uh, uh, like community projects or, or, or community run businesses or things like that. Lean into all of those that you have available and you never know what can come out of that. Now, I know we also had a question about uh, what is the benefit of using Microsoft Learn to learn new technology? Salman, I know you know this, but I wanna talk to the audience about this. Is Microsoft Learn doesn't only have Microsoft technology, like tutorials and sandboxes on Microsoft technologies. Uh, I think I learned an introduction to Rust, which is a programming language on there. Uh, I brushed up on my Linux Bash skills on there as well. Have you done anything recently with Microsoft Learn? So one thing I actually did do recently, and it kind of ties into the last question, is that there's just a, a learning path there to help guide you into internships as well. So that's a really cool thing. And it doesn't have to just be a Microsoft internship. It could be other internships. So it's, it's advice that applies. And yeah, that's what I've, I found on Microsoft Learn recently. Yeah, absolutely. And the, like we mentioned, the cool thing is that these Learn modules, are, Microsoft Learn, the way it works is you have individual uh, uh, lessons called modules. That can be anywhere from I don't know 20 minutes up to like longer. It depends on how much time you have. You can sort of select which ones you want to do. And then collections of modules are also called learning paths, which is more of a, sort of like focused guided learning. 
text, there's videos, there's diagrams, there's actual sandboxes. So you're actually implementing the instructions that they're providing. It's not just reading, it's not just theory, which I think is very important as well. So be sure to check out Microsoft Learn. Again, it's free. You don't even have to create an Azure account for it because the sandboxes provide that environment for you as well. Now, uh, oh, here's another great question. I think we have so many great questions, but we can also use social media to answer them. But I think this might be one of our last ones here. But do all cloud careers in Azure require coding or just basic coding knowledge? I'm a big fan of cloud computing, uh, obviously, especially Azure. But the cool thing about cloud, and I know you know this, Solomon, but it's so large. It's so broad. You could be a cloud admin, cloud architect, cloud uh, developer, cloud um, what else is there? Like security, cloud security, yeah, there's the AI engineer in the cloud. You could be a DevOps engineer with focus on cloud. There's so many different uh, career paths for you. And there are some that are so, like there's uh, cloud sales architect. There's a bunch of areas that you can specialize in in cloud. Some of them will require more programming than others. Some of them will require maybe very little programming. Some may require you to build full applications. Some might require you to use code for more uh, the DevOps related tasks. So to answer your question, not every single career in cloud is going to require programming. You got anything else to add to that? Mm -hmm. So I, I just want to put it out there. So like a lot of the graduates who got hired at Microsoft for the cloud program or cloud solution architect role, they, they came from non-tech degrees. And that's so they had no experience coding. So, so in that sense, Yes, you you need you don't even need any experience coding. So yeah, Logic Apps, the one I started with on Microsoft Learn, no code at all. Literally blocks. It's like, oh, enter your Twitter username. Gives me a sign in. Next, or enter your Gmail it's or your Outlook. Graphical interface. Exactly. Right. It's like you don't need any any code. To add to that, we have a session on low code and no code uh, in one of our days here at Intro to Tech Skills. So if you're interested in that, definitely check that out as well. I think we have. Time for one more question here. Uh, did you want to pick one out, or? Mm -hmm. So I think what one question was that, hey, we have we have this Imagine Cloud program, mm -hmm. and it's like, okay, yeah, you you have teams, but how do you find teams? And what I saw was the amazing ability that you can have these sessions set up by the Imagine Cloud program, where they will create these like networking sessions where you can go ahead and interact with students right. who have the same passion for a different area in tech as you do. So, for example, I'm very interested in artificial intelligence. That's what I do for my degree. And so I can interact with other AI students. I'm also interested in mixed reality. So there were curated sessions put on by the staff at Microsoft on mixed reality. There was stuff on artificial intelligence mm -hmm. and also networking sessions. So I could see, OK, this is who I can work with on my project. And it's also not limited to just your region. So you can work with people across the world. So I was working, I was trying to create a team with people in India, someone from China. It's pretty awesome. Exactly. Now, as a non-student, which is me, um, actually didn't even go to college, finding teams or finding people that you want to build with, you got to use your network. You got to build community, put yourself out there. There's marks of forums, there's blogs, there's YouTube channels, all these kinds of things. Look out for them. We'll have a bunch of resources again in the GitHub as well. And I think our time is up, unfortunately, Salman. But there's so much more. We're going to be with you in every single session here at Intro to Tech Skills. Whenever you see that map, you're probably also going to see us as well. Any final words, words Salman? No, but hey, we're here for you. Enjoy Intro to Tech Skills. And make sure to tweet and share so we can showcase you. We'll see you soon.